You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. Moody Coliseum, one of the great home court advantages in college basketball, is host to a key early season conference game. Houston and SMU both at 3-1 and one in the American meet for the first time this year. Kevin Brown, the former Michigan standout, Tim McCormick. This is a strength versus strength kind of game. SMU, the most efficient offense in the conference, and Houston, one of the most efficient defenses in the country. Kevin, fun matchup, in-state rival. They don't like each other very much. You've got outstanding offense versus stifling defense. I love Houston's dominant defense. Physical, tough. They breathe on you and sweat on you and don't let you run the sets. And SMU, a beautiful offense, free-flowing, with a lot of skilled big guys. And some really skilled shooters we'll see in this game. These two teams can dial it up from three. SMU not particularly deep, go about seven deep. Houston will run you down a bit more with nine, ten that can play. The Mustangs three and one in the conference. They are very, very good here at home. They've got three and zero in conference home games. Houston, meanwhile, was one of three unbeaten teams remaining in the nation until. A loss at Temple for Kelvin Sampson's group Wednesday. Still 16-1, one of the great starts in program history. SMU wins the tip, and Jimmy Witt will control it for the Mustangs in the home white uniforms today. And Jimmy Witt will be a key player to watch. Miss shoot around with the flu bug today, but he said this is a rivalry game. No chance. I'm missing it. Here is Witt, the transfer from Arkansas in his second year. Their leader in rebounds, assists, and steals. Out to Isaiah Mike, missing a three. And the rebound won by Fabian White of the Cougars. Offensively, a big part of the Cougars' attack, the deep ball. They love to drive and kick. They love to run in transition and hunt for those threes. Corey Davis, Jr., Houston's leading scorer. Breon Brady. The Cougar big is doubled out to the point guard, Galen Robinson. Brooks spots up and misses a three. A deep one missed for each team early on. Yeah, these are two really hard playing teams, and you won't find a better battle on the glass. SMU, the best offensive rebounding team in the American, and Houston dominates the defensive boards. Two teams that make their strength with tough physical play even with a lack of size at times. McMurray misses a two, and the rebound grabbed by Brady. So two defensive rebounds to start for Houston, keeping SMU off the glass. Keelan Robinson out to Corey Davis. Davis gets the touch on a three for the opening basket. You know, Kevin, the, the strength offensively for Houston is they lead the AAC in threes made about nine per game. It kind of shows two trips, two three attempts. And Davis, their leading scorer, the first in the book. Ethan Shagwa foul. There's a cylinder play. Breon Brady called for the foul, his first. Ron Groover, Patrick Evans, and Kelly Self, our officials tonight. Uh, Brady saying, how's the foul on me? I got drilled in the head. And, and he has an argument right in front of the referees. Yeah, I think that the, the brady Shagwa matchup is going to be a really important battle here. Referees are going to take a look. An elbow above the shoulders, unacceptable. This is an early official review. What was called a violation of the cylinder on Brady for the foul. Is there something flagrant with Shagwa? Or is that just a, a normal basketball move? Well, to me, that did not look like a normal basketball move. Look, he's low, and his elbow was high. And, you know, the, the, the key word I always think about in these reviews is the word unnecessary. And that seemed unnecessary, and I would not be surprised if the Cougars will be the beneficiaries of this review. Is it excessive, unnecessary for potential flagrant early? Both these teams expected it to be a physical game. And talking to Kelvin Sampson, Tim Jankovic beforehand, we get some early physicality, and the officials will make their decision. Brian Brady is typically in all sorts of foul trouble for Houston. 
here just a common foul. We get the word from Ron Gruber. So not deemed to be excessive by Shagwa. The foul against Brady. It will stay SMU possession. We have two really aggressive defensive teams, and they were both complementary of each other. Jankovic and Kelvin Sampson go way back to their days in the Big 12. Kelvin Sampson, longtime head coach at Oklahoma. Shagwa with the dump off, and a foul underneath as Brady went flying into Isaiah Mike. I, I, I talked to Isaiah today, and he said this is a big game for him. And he remembers last year during his red shirt year, he was going through the post-game handshake line, and one of the one of the Cougars said, "Hey, young fellow, get better soon." He said, "I'm not getting better. I'm not hurt. I'm just red shirting." And he's used that as motivation. He has not wait, could not wait to get to this game for a full year. You could hardly blame whatever Cougar player that was. SMU had so many injuries last year, three key season enders. They were very thin. They have a thin rotation right now, but it's partly out of design. Have a couple of healthy bodies that are freshmen that don't play. Jimmy Witt unlocks the scoring for SMU. He might be sick, but he gets the first two. Did I tell you that I signed up for his fan club? I love Jimmy Witt. Long arms, active, on the glass, runs the offense, star. Here's Brooks, his second three, and he connects. Armani Brooks, three and a half, three pointers per game. Only Jamal McMurray hits more on a per game basis in this conference. Oh, and he's also their top rebounder as a guard. Whip. Over Robinson, back-to-back mid-range pull-ups for Jimmy Wood, who's hit just two threes on the year, but he is a killer from the mid-range. If I could find one key that really impresses me about SMU, it's their containment defense. Hard to drive by them. Uh, except there. White did just that, but he missed the layup rather badly. Here come the Mustangs, the most efficient offense in the conference. Ethan Chagua, beautiful move, but couldn't connect, and Brooks has the rebound. Houston with Bryson Gresham and off the bench for Brady with the early two fouls. Nothing new for them. The bigs in constant foul trouble. Brooks marked by Jure Foster. Here's Brooks, got it to Galen Robinson. Robinson rattles out a three. Brooks came flying in, and possession will remain with Houston. And that is Jure Foster still down for SMU. Foster missed the first six games of this season with his recovery still ongoing from a torn ACL suffered last year. And it is uplifting to see him on his feet. And I'll tell you, when, when Coach Jankovic today was talking about his star, Jerry Foster, you could see how much he loves him. I'm not talking about like him. He loves him. And last year when he saw his best player go down, it really hurt him inside. So I know that he was holding his breath seeing him on the floor. That's off the hand aggression and a turnover committed by Houston. Hope Jure Foster is okay. He'll be looked at during this timeout. Houston and SMU with a slugfest start from Dallas. Early 6-4 lead for the Houston Cougars on a couple of threes. They've put up five shots, four of them from outside the arc. Armani Brooks, Corey Davis Jr. with the triples. SMU at 3-1 and one in conference play. The one loss on the road against Connecticut. Wins here over East Carolina and Tulsa. Went at Tulane as well. Jamal McMurray, SMU's leading scorer. Off to Nat Dixon. And Isaiah Mike missing a three. Houston has brought Cedric Alley into the game for the first time. 23 in red and black. Robinson, Davis, Gresham, and Brooks.
Brooks over Dixon. Got it. That is a three with his toes close to the line, but ruled a triple. Brooks' second three of the game. We welcome those of you who just watched UConn in Tulsa. Kevin Brown, Tim McCormick from Moody Coliseum in Dallas. A good start for the 16-1 Houston Cougars who've hit three threes. Two from Armani Brooks, one from Corey Davis at route to an early lead. A couple of three and one teams here in the American, Tim. A great in-state rivalry, the first of two meetings between these two this year. Really a special matchup, Houston. Dominant D, they're tough, they're physical, they breathe on you, they sweat on you and don't let you run your offense, and SMU runs a beautiful offense, free-flowing. The big guys shoot threes, the guards are non-stop drivers. This has the makings of a real battle of contrast. Here's Brooks, who is hot early. Three threes for number three, and a primal scream from Brooks after the last one. He is already near his number of three-pointers made per game. These are really good rebounding teams as well. SMU, the best in the American Conference on the offensive glass, and Houston just gobbles people up on the deep. Now let's take a look at the deep shooting of Armani Brooks, 14 points per game, deep range, a dynamite guard for the Cougars. And I look at him as, as a non-stop competitor. 70% of his shots this year, Kevin, are threes. Is a leading rebounder as well, second leading scorer. Brooks, the sixth man of the year in the conference last year, has rounded out his game. SMU team led by Jimmy Witt at the point right now. Witt, not a participant in shoot around today, has been under the weather. Uh, but if you're just joining us, he has all four of the SMU points, a couple of mid range baskets. Jamal McMurray with a miss, and Chagwa could not finish. Very good offensive rebounding team, and Chagwa. Had a shot. Davis short on a three. Cedric Alley tangled up with Jimmy Witt. And the foul appears to be going against Alley to the great frustration of the Houston bench. I talked to Witt earlier today, and he was tangled up on the play. I asked him how he's feeling. He missed shoot around. He said, I don't feel so good. A little bit of a flu bug, but he said, this is a rivalry game. I would never miss it. Then he went to shake my hand, and I gave him the fist bump. I'm not going to shake Wise hands with this sick you. guy. Huh? So the foul there was called against Alley. And Patrick Evans is over Kelvin Sampson's coach's box for an explanation. Kevin, the, the, the key matchup today is going to be on the boards. And let's, let's get a little message here about the last call. Okay, we have a double foul, according to Ron Groover, on the shot, so there's no team control. So they use the possession arrow to determine Houston ball. So double foul against Gresham, or against Alley, beg your pardon, for Houston. And then it gets Witt for SMU. So first foul on both Alley and Witt. Already four fouls against Houston. Breon Brady, who started already out of the game with two. Here's Shagwa, big man who can shoot a little too deep. Brooks taps the rebound to himself. Last touch by Jimmy Witt. It will be Houston ball. What do you expect to see primarily when Houston controls against this SMU defense? Well, what they're going to do is they're going to push and run for threes. You know, back old school, coaches would say, let's get some good transition defense, run back, protect the rim, flood the paint. But against Houston, it's the opposite. You sprint back and you cover the three-point line. Remember, the Cougars, nine threes made per game. That's number one in the AAC. Brooks looking for a fourth. No, but the follow is there. Punctured home by Fabian White, Jr. Eight in a row for the Houston Cougars. SMU hasn't scored in the neighborhood of four minutes. McMurray, very tough shot and an easy rebound for White. Here's the preseason freshman of the year, Nate Hinton. Hinton coast to coast leaves it short. 
And grabbed by Witt, SMU's leading rebounder. Witt over White. That ends a long Mustang drought. And Witt has been a star. Six points, two rebounds, and plenty of leadership. White from Robinson denied. Here comes Witt with SMU numbers. Jimmy Witt, fouled by Armani Brooks. Getting to the rim, Fabian White, 6'7", so long, throwing it down, and this is a, a super intense guy. Uh, Kelvin Sampson has really aggressive shoot-around practices. They went for 90 minutes today, and it looked like a lot of teams' normal practice. As an example, there was a loose ball during a drill. Fabian White sprinting as fast as he could, dove on the floor for the loose ball. His teammates, massive applause, and that was in a shoot-around practice. That was early in the shoot-around, too. I mean, that's about five minutes in. It was a spirited, spirited 90 minutes. Then Houston had a spirited layup line. And now they're off to a spirited start. Free throws for Witt, 65% on the year. And he gets the first. This Saturday, get your popcorn ready for a big double header of college hoops on ESPN. Kentucky and Auburn, two top 14 teams in the SEC at 4 Eastern, 3 Central. Then maybe the game of the year in the regular season. A sonic blockbuster. Undefeated Virginia and number one Duke. Ah, I heard something about that game. <laughs> and who's going to play point guard for Duke with Trey Jones out? I have a suggestion. Maybe R.J. Barrett against Syracuse. 20 points, 16 boards, and 9 assists. Pretty good candidate. Unfortunately for Duke, you saw the loss of Jones and a loss to Syracuse really affected them. Out indefinitely. Hoping the Cam Reddish will be back for that game. All right, first time we're seeing zone against Houston. You better extend it because they love to launch threes. Robinson, six to shoot. Galen Robinson, Jr. Through the center of the defense. Tip to Shagwa. Here comes McMurray, tied up and fouled by Davis. Called on the floor. Foul before the shot, but the fouls are piling up for Houston. Six already in the first half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dove Men Plus Care. Care makes a man stronger. Houston Cougars in front by six over SMU. Four three-pointers made by the Cougs in the early going. SMU without Jure Foster over the last seven minutes or so. Or beg your pardon, the last four minutes or so. Foster number 10 came flying at the end of this play. Went to ground, has not returned was riding a stationary bike during that last stoppage of play. Remember, Jere Foster, Tim Torres ACL last year at Wichita State, missed 14 games at the end of the season. First six this year. Um, they've been a significantly different team with him back in the lineup. It was January 15th in Wichita. He was on the NBA radar. How valuable is Jere Foster? Seven and one since his return. They really need him back on the court, especially against Houston. Foster out right now for an SMU team that only goes about seven deep as it is. Here's a positionless offense for SMU. The bigs handle, the guards drive. Notice the paint is usually open, Kevin. It's a missed three by Nat Dixon, the grad transfer from Chattanooga. And an SMU player ran out of bounds, touched the ball, Houston has it. With SMU bringing Isaiah Mike back into the game for Shagwa. So for Ron Hunt and Dixon off the bench in the game for SMU, this is about as deep as they go. Kelvin Sampson was talking to us before the game. He said, look, sometimes teams that go seven, that can build your chemistry. The problem for Tim Jankovic is he's really down to six right now with Foster unavailable. Well, he has a happy team because the seven guys all play over 20 minutes a game, and they all score over six. 
floater for Davis is strong. Gresham tried for the putback. And a foul is called underneath against Houston. When I watch, Basket interference, beg your pardon. When I look at Calvin Sampson, I first met him in 1979. I went on my recruiting visit to Michigan State, and he was on Judd Heathcote's staff. And he's had such an illustrious career. Washington State, Oklahoma, Indiana, six years in the NBA. Jimmy went with the basket. He has all 10 of SMU's points. Jimmy Witt told you he was sick. I don't think he was making it up. He didn't play at all in shoot around. Maybe he's well rested because oh he took shoot around off. Players across the nation everywhere will be taking off shoot around after this start. Fabian White. White over the freshman hunt delivers. Fabian White making his second start of the year. He was slow to return from an injury to his foot, but has been providing a big lift of late for Houston. Kevin, look at the paint inside the three-point line. You see that spacing? A lot of driving lanes for the Mustangs. And Murray trying to take it. Davis and hit and cut it off. Matt Dixon. Offensive foul. Well played by Hinton, the fiery freshman. Dixon called for his first. Today at shoot-around, Tim Jankovic told his big guys, make sure that you're a statue before you set that screen. But I think it's more the guard's fault. Take a look at the, the, the screen is set. Dixon did a little push-off. I didn't really see the foul there. Well, sold well by hit either way. Houston retakes with Dejan Giroux in the game. UMass transfer, 13. Here's White. And it's a foul against SMU as well as Dixon hit the deck. And he's just picked up two quick fouls. So William Douglas has taken off the warm-up jacket. And an SMU team that goes about seven deep will go to its eighth man, the sophomore Douglas, who has barely played since the return of Jure Foster. Still have not seen Foster since that injury about four minutes into the game. Davis. Here's Giroux. And Dejan Giroux is fouled. Free throws coming for the Massachusetts transfer. As we establish the game plans, I watch Houston play, and they're so much better in a fast transition-oriented game. If it's half court, I think that favors SMU and stepping to the line. A really good young player, Dejan Giroux, 6'5", lanky playmaker, really gets to the paint very well. And he's coming off a rough first semester. Had finger surgery and then had his grandma and a, a cousin pass away. So I know that Kelvin Sampson is really pulling him close and trying to offer that support. Dejan missed six games due to a violation of team rules, unspecified. The finger you mentioned, he had a sprained MCL. Played in the first game, was out for a while, and has provided a big lift to this team since his return. McMurray. Long three, bottoms out. McMurray still yet to score. Offensive rebound, Isaiah Mike. First points for any SMU player named, not named Jimmy Witt. And they come to the 844 mark. 11 minutes plus in. First made field goal and 12 tries the rest of the team. Giroux can't connect. Gresham keeps it alive and Brooks grabs the offensive rebound. These are two great teams on the offensive glass. One through five, they all share the job. That's a blocking foul against Witt. He's picked up two as well. Now, if you're going to attack the offensive glass, last, let me throw this out to you. Both these teams like to shoot threes. If you miss the long shot, the rebound is going to bounce long. And that's why the guard rebounding is going to be so critical in this game. 
SMU has missed six threes in the game. But Houston has fairly dominated the glass offensively. Tim Jankovic almost never leaves anybody in the game in the first half with two fouls if he can avoid it. But right now he really can't. Has to play with with the two fouls with a short rotation. Davis misses a three. Two missed shots on the possession. And here is Jimmy Witt. And Witt turns it over. Dejan Jerome. Brooks will reset for Houston. Cougars, the lone ranked team in the American Conference. One of three unbeatens left in the country until Wednesday, and a loss that really was decided in the final second at Temple. And Corey Davis was called for a charge down two, drawn by Temple's Ernest to Flackby. Mike, good shot fake. And a smother, that's a tie up on the drive by Hunt. Gresham was there, White as well. Ball will stay with SMU when we return. Cougs hanging on in Dallas. Houston Cougars off to one of their best starts in the history of this program. 16 and one, it was 15 and 0 before Wednesday nights. Cougars went down to Philly, down two in the closing seconds. Corey Davis Jr. tied the game with a chance to take the lead, or so it seemed. Ernest of Flackby of Temple got out of the restricted arc. Was the right call? A Flackby drew the charge. Here, Louis would hit two free throws to seal it, and Temple ended Houston's unbeaten start to the year. Okay, Corey Davis Jr. is at the line, Tim. You just spoke with Ron Gruber, one of the officials. What happened before we went to break? Well, jump ball, and as SMU was walking to the bench, there was some talking, and Ferran Hunt was whistled with a technical foul. And that's the reason he's currently on the bench. He may be there a while. So Hunt on the bench with a technical foul. Uh, Nat Dixon is on the bench with two fouls. Jare Foster is out of the game after falling awkwardly about four minutes in, sustaining some sort of an injury. SMU, a team that goes about seven deep, has gone eight deep so far with William Douglas in the game, and the Mustangs are a little short-handed. Witt nearly a push-off. Instead, a long two rebounded by Davis. Houston has hit four threes to start. Brooks has hit three of them. Giroux really walked. Instead, it's Gresham. The two UMass transfers, Gresham and Giroux, longtime teammates. Brooks left it short. Rebound to Jimmy Witt. Neither team shooting well so far. Talking to Gale and Robinson at shoot around, he said SMU runs their sets better than anybody else in the American. McMurray yet to score until now. Uh, when I watch Houston, I'm so impressed with the spacing of their offense and the intensity of their cuts. And you see that a lot when coaches spend time in the NBA. That's really something that NBA squads emphasize. Which Kelvin Sampson did for the Houston Rockets before coming to UH. Good drive by Giroux, who missed. Houston one of its last 11, and it will be SMU ball. Out. Isaiah Mike, they cannot afford another injury, especially with Jaray Foster out. They only went seven deep before. He's walking pretty well. And remember, SMU has had the NCAA scholarship reductions as well. They've had injuries. Tim Jankovic told us today that we are the most penalized program in college basketball history. In terms of scholarship losses over the last three years, that stems from the Larry Brown days. So what Tim Jankovic has done to keep this team afloat with the scholarship restrictions is amazing. But last year he said that you know, it really was difficult because they couldn't have five-on-five -five scrimmages. He was using walk-ons, but two of them got hurt. <laughs> Anything that could go wrong. 
Here's C.J. White running the point for SMU. He's the ninth different Mustang in the game. McMurray a tough two, very difficult shot. So Jimmy Witt has taken a seat with two fouls. White and Douglas, both little used players into the game for SMU, which has gone two deeper than its normal rotation since DeRay Foster's return. And yet, it's only a five point game. Brooks, still firing away. Still been stuck on 3-3 three since the early going. Yeah, this is the trip to try to get a little bit of time off the clock and then go into your big guys. It's an advantage for SMU if they get to the post. McMurray. Davis has been all over him, and there Davis fouls McMurray, who got him in the air and will shoot two. Second foul against Corey Davis, Jr. All right, Jamal McMurray is one of the most unorthodox players that Tim Jankovic has ever coached. He's very creative, he's tricky, and he said that he'd take an easy shot and make it hard and vice versa. That was pretty impressive ball control there. 78% free throw shooter gets the first. NBA Friday on ESPN starts at 8 Eastern, 7 Central in Minnesota with the Spurs and Wolves and the Warriors off that absolute ripping of the Nuggets last night. What a 51 in the first. They'll head to L.A. take on the Clippers at 10.30 Eastern. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with NBA Countdown on ESPN and the ESPN app. They don't necessarily need more offense, but DeMarcus Cousins comes back and makes them oh, yeah. more lethal on the offensive end. That is scheduled, uh, scheduled to be his debut Friday night in L.A. First game as a Warrior if there are no setbacks. All right, good idea, zone defense. You're down in numbers. You just want to get to halftime. Houston, one of its last 13. No field goals in the last 5-15. SMU can tie with a three. Shagwa cannot. Douglas pushes the ball to Jerome. Here is Armani Brooks, slithering inside and finally unlocks the lid. A nearly five and a half minute drought for Houston. Brooks has 11 of the Cougars 21. SMU's got 16 points, why? Houston number one in scoring defense, about 60 per game. Hit with a rebound off the miss from Mike. Right now, it's Brooks with 11 of Houston's 21. Witt with 10 of SMU's 16. Robinson bumped and fouled by Douglas, his second. Three players with two fouls for an already short-staffed SMU squad. Zion Williamson, size, athleticism, explosive power. Oh my! Zion Williamson at number one, Duke. Well, they hit the hardwood on Saturday, part of a great doubleheader on ESPN. Kentucky, Auburn, and four Eastern, number 12 and number 14. Off a big game by Ashton Higgins last night for the Cats. And then Duke, Virginia. Two unbeaten teams left in the country. Virginia's one of them. Michigan or Virginia, the two undefeated teams, they go head to head, who do you take? Well, I'll, I'll take Virginia and I'll take Virginia to give Duke some trouble as the number one team. How about this, Duke has never lost to anybody but North Carolina at home as the number one team until this week. They lose to Syracuse Money, they could lose twice without Trey Jones, it's a very good Virginia team. And that would make number one in the country, University of Michigan. And Kelvin Sampson doesn't want to hear that. He still has flashbacks, I'm sure, in the middle of the night. He wakes up in a cold sweat, seeing Jordan Poole from Michigan knocking down that shot in the NCAA tournament. Those for you are called happy dreams, aren't they? <laughs> Jordan Poole memories. Still smiling. Galen Robinson hits two. It, it, it's a game that lives in infamy for Houston. They still bring it up here and there at some shoot-arounds. And the route at 32. Michigan, of course, would go on to the national title game. Had Houston won that game, the Cougars would have been the lower seed in every remaining game up to the final, depending on how far they got. So 
There was a path, and for Houston, the Cougs right now a five seed in Joe Lenardi's early bracketology. They are right now the top team in the American. Joey Brackett's very early, thinks UCF and Cincinnati are nine seeds, and as Temple is the last team in. So right now, the American of four-bid league with Houston on top. Yeah, last year I thought Houston was the most physical defensive team in the entire tournament. Jimmy Witt hits another two, and we have a stoppage. Kelvin Sampson irate. Ron Gruber headed to the scorer's table. Kelvin's irate with his team, it appears. Earlier, earlier today, as Kelvin receives his coaching box warning, I, um, I made the comment that if you like your defense physical and tough and confrontational, this is a game for you. Early field goal percentages, 27% for SMU, only 28% for Houston. Kelvin's trying to toughen up his team right now with the tie on for the moment, but dramatically loosened. Kelvin got a, uh, a tie technical on Wednesday in the loss of Temple. He was teed up for essentially taking the tie off, which I've, he's I've done for 30 that. years, if you yeah. know Kelvin Sampson. You know the tie's <laughs> coming off at some point. So a bunch of Houston fans wore red ties in support in their home win over Wichita State on Saturday. So this three by Brooks, here's SMU. Witt has scored 12 of their 18. And Jimmy Witt is on fire. His head may be on fire. He may shoot around with a flu. And he scored 14 of his team's 20 right now. Robinson's pass tipped by Douglas. 16 to shoot, stays with Houston. And the happiest guy in the building right now is Tim Jankovic, SMU's coach. They're hanging pretty well. Jare Foster out. For Ron Hunt, not playing because of a technical foul. He's gone deep into his bench. Remember, he only likes to play seven. He's already had to play nine. No McMurray in the game right now either. Three players with two fouls. Foster came out right before the under-16 media timeout. Houston one field goal in nearly eight minutes. Robinson at the shot clock buzzer. A 13% on the year last year for Galen Robinson from three. This year, 40%. And take a look at the shot clock. Did he get it off? Absolutely. Boy, that's timely, too. He's a key player for Calvin Sampson, a high school hero in Houston. He was really the first local star to say yes to Calvin Sampson. They were really in trouble. He had Big 12 offers, player of the year. And he committed to a program that was 13 and 19, no practice facility, and an old, beat up, broken down arena. Robinson and Brooks, the only two players on this roster who played in the old Hoffines Pavilion. A brand spanking new for Tita Center this year. Jerome with a push ahead, White with an awkward angle missed. Rebound to Isaiah Mike. Here comes Witt. He went 14 and five rebounds so far. Mike in the white. Isaiah Mike, the Duquesne transfer, on the board for the Mustangs. You're noticing that the offense coming a little bit easier now. Both teams getting into an offensive flow. Good up fake by White. Got Shagwa in the air and finished. Where's the defense now? SMU will take its use it or lose it timeout. Won't we'll join them. Back at 30, the Moody Coliseum. Tim Jankovic takes the timeout. Might as well. You're not going to carry it with you to the second half. His SMU team down by six. 
Uh, SMU is 9 for 25 for the field, Tim. They're 0 for 7 for 3. They are right now even on the glass for a team that usually wins a rebounding battle. No Jure Foster. They've had to go deep into the bench. How in the world are they still in this game? Well, the play of Jimmy Witt, he's been the best player on the court. And for those of you that don't know him, started at Arkansas, and he wanted to be a point guard. That's the reason he transferred. His skill set is undeniable. He's got great length and playmaking ability. The one thing that keeps him off the NBA radar is that long-range jump shot. Which is two threes on the year, but he's been deadly for the mid-range today. That's stripped away by Hinton off of Isaiah Mike. And an SMU turnover, the Mustangs fourth. Houston brings a manly double team into the low post. Anytime that SMU throws it inside, there is a vice grip thrown into that low post man. Hit. Rebound to Witt. What do we have? A foul on the floor. And that's a boxing out foul against Nat Dixon. Playing with two fouls, and Dixon has picked up his third. And Tim Jankovic, about as infrequently as any coach plays someone with two fouls in the first half, he hasn't really had the choice today with Jare Foster out most of the half. And it backfires to an extent as Dixon picks up a third. Yeah, we really like, liked Bryson Gresham at shoot around today. Not a great free throw shooter, but he's very active on the glass. Just 11 for 23 from the line for Gresham, one of the best offensive rebounders in the conference. Isaiah Mike. Mike nearly lost it again with Hinton all over him. Eight to shoot for a win. Gresham out for the double. Shagwa and a travel. Houston can hold for the last shot. Okay, Houston is the best defensive team in the American. Look at this double team right here. They're number one in field goal percentage defense. There's the block out underneath by Dixon. I thought he did a pretty nice job. Not surprising he'd be physical. High school, went to Boston College as a freshman, played wide receiver in the ACC. That's pretty impressive. He decided, I love basketball. I don't want any more of this football. He went the JC route, then was able to get a scholarship to UT Chattanooga. Had some good work, good success there. And then did the grad transfer. Now, he's got a pretty good role on this team. I, I, I like his game that he played earlier against very good Georgetown team. He sparked them and, and led them to victory. They were down when he came in the game. He got hot, scored 11 quick points, and they ended up winning. I mean, how impressive is that? Not just a two-sport athlete, but an ACC wide yeah. receiver and a power conference basketball player as well. Dixon out of the game, though, and Houston can hold for the last shot off the Kelvin Sampson timeout. Giroux with Robinson, Brooks, Hinton. And Gresham. Dejan Jerome. Brooks from way downtown. He drains the three. Armani Brooks let that one go from Atascacita. 4-3 <laughs> in the first half for Brooks. And Houston slams a tiny dagger into the heart of the Mustangs. 35-foot bomb. And Brooks is a great three-point marksman. The junior from Round Rock with 14 and a half. His Cougars ahead by nine at Moody. <laughs> 83rd meeting of the Houston Cougars and SMU Mustangs on the hardwood. A nine-point lead for Houston, which leads 50 to 32 overall in the series. The first meeting way back when in 1956 in the Midwest Regional of the NCAA Tournament. A happy Mustangs group which beat Houston 89-74 in the Regional Semi and went on to the Final Four, SMU's only Final Four in program history. 
Oddly enough, the Mustangs would face another American Conference foe in that Final Four, losing to Temple in the third place game. The national champion that year, the Dons of San Francisco. Back-to-back -back titles for USF, who's having a bit of a rebirth this year, but not quite to the golden days of yesteryear. 55-56, San Francisco led by Bill Russell. They took down SMU and won the national title over Iowa. 83rd meeting of the Cougs and Mustangs will continue when we return from Dallas. Nine-point lead for Houston, which was extended at the end of the first half when Armani Brooks hit a deep three, his fourth. SMU, meanwhile, 0 for 7 from beyond the arc. The Mustangs have hit a three in every game this year. They shoot 35%, but Tim Jankovic's team has not connected from outside so far. Kevin Brown, former Michigan Wolverine, Tim McCormick. We are through 20 minutes, Tim. The lead nine for the Houston Cougars, and bad news for SMU. Jare Foster out for the remainder of this game with a sprained knee. So Nat Dixon starts in the second half with three fouls. And Houston starts with a basket from Breon Brady. Ethan Shagwell with a miss three. And here is Robinson with the rebound. White misses, but is fouled. You know, the thing that's so significant about Jare Foster is that he's the defensive coordinator out there. Kelvin Sampson said that Foster is the guts. He's big, strong, an NBA guy, and the record shows his value. Seven and one since his return to the lineup, and that's devastating news that he's out. Hopefully, it's minor and he'll be back soon. A thin team could not afford to get thinner. Missed 20 games between the end of last year, the start of this year, with a torn ACL. They've been terrific since he returned. This is White Cans, the second free throw. Foul against Isaiah Mike. All right, 18 to nothing advantage beyond the arc. SMU cannot win this game unless they get that number a bit closer. McMurray did not hit a three. He's one for six in the first half. Dixon tries a three and misses. Put back by Shagwa, who was 0 for 5 and finally gets on the board. Some foul trouble for SMU. William Douglas with two. Dixon three. Timmy Witt only one. There was a second foul earlier in the first half. That was taken away. Witt with just the one personal. Brady, a little shove into Mike. Not called. Davis smothered by Dixon. Off to Breon Brady. Kept the feet on the ground and Brady delivers. Yeah, this defense is so aggressive that SMU's having a hard time targeting a hot score. Brady's first basket, the first beg your pardon, was from White in the opening half. As SMU finally connects from three, Isaiah Mike with the Mustangs' first made triple of the game. Here's Robinson. Rebound, Jamal McMurray. Mike wants it again. Passed up the three. Nearly had a chance for an old-fashioned three, but he'll shoot two. SMU not able to get the traditional offense going inside Shagwa on the offensive board and his running mate on the front line. Drive and dish. Isaiah Mike knocking down the shot. These are so unique in today's game. Coaches are looking for big guys that have the, the dribble pass skills. Shag was a perfect example. Talked to him earlier today. And he said when he entered high school, he was only six foot two. Then all of a sudden, he started growing. And those guard skills he developed as a kid fit in really well here for SMU. Guarding the big man's body, Ethan Shagwa. 
Mike one for two. And these bigs can shoot for SMU, and they may need to if the Mustangs want to come back and win this thing. Melvin Sampson thought this was an SMU team that if they got past Houston, might go 9-0 at home in the conference. Loves the way they play in Moody, but his Cougars are taking it to him. Davis with a long two for a double-digit lead. I think Corey Davis is my favorite Houston player. No-nonsense guy. Plays both ends, a complete player. Preseason second team all conference. Shagwa just threw it up. They found the hoop. That looked a little bit like Jamal McMurray in the first half. Now let's enjoy the work of Corey Davis. Versus Temple, he had that big drive. I know he would have made the free throw if he would have got the call because he's 95% from the free throw line. Fabian White will check out of the game. The foul on Brady, his third, but he'll stay in. Brady averages about 10 fouls per 40 minutes. He's always in foul trouble for Houston. Kelvin Sampson sticks with him early in the second. Cedric Alley has checked into the game for the Cougars. Here's Witt, who had 14 in the first half for SMU. Under the weather. Missed shoot around. McMurray. Shagwa with a tap, and Brooks kept it alive with the knock ahead to Corey Davis, Jr. Davis, terrific drive, and Davis rolls it home. Every time SMU gets a little traction, Corey Davis says, not tonight. About 100 Houston fans who got tickets from the school who made the drive up 250 miles away. Loving his 12-point lead. Shagwa with a three. Ethan Shagwa coming off the best conference game of his career in terms of scoring at 18, five rebounds, two steals. And the win over Tulsa, a 20-point win Saturday. Brooks elevates and deals over Witt for a two. Their three-guard lineup is lethal. I always feel like Cincinnati's the best defensive team year in, year out in the American. I don't know this year. Houston is pretty darn good, and the numbers back it up. McMurray, that is what he can do at his best. Finally hits a three, and SMU, after no threes in the first half, has three triples in the second. around. Brooks. A lot of contact underneath and that's against Houston. Corey Davis at shoot around today. Didn't say a word. He's all business. Getting to the rim here. Nice little touch on the drive. The Houston Cougars up eight on the road at Moody Coliseum. Twelve eleven lead for SMU to start this second half. Plus one, that's turned a nine point lead to an eight point one for Kelvin Sampson's Houston Cougars. And, and shoot around today, Kelvin Sampson was yelling at his guys, they won't beat us on the first shot. SMU number seven in the country in offensive rebounds. And I, I bet we heard him 25 times yell, block out, block out. Come on, guys, block out. It was non-stop, and they've done a really good job. The best offensive rebounding team, SMU, only four offensive rips in this game. Calvin Sampson's Cougars are... Second best in the league in rebound margin. SMU won behind them. And Kelvin Sampson said, I think this game will be won or lost on the glass. Right now it's SMU by one overall on the glass. Houston two more offensive. McMurray missed the floater. Good rebound for Bryson Gresham. Robinson pushes the pace for the Cougars. Slow it down with Davis. That's a step back two. 
he's just cold blooded. Second Houston player in double figures today with 11. Davis, their leading scorer in five of the last eight games. Jimmy Witt, first bucket of the second half for Witt. He is seven for eight. The rest of the team is seven for 26. Maybe he should shoot more. I, 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 just keep I, drawing it up for him. Huh? I've heard the scouting report that Jimmy Witt can't shoot. Throw that one out. Turn that to Embers. Brooks. Yeah, Corey Davis was a JC transfer, and he walked into the program professional and ready to work. Also, Jimmy Witt, a marvelous mid-range game. Coming a true point guard, fourth-year junior. Alley can't connect. Rebound to Gresham. Davis floats one home over Shagwa. He's starting to feel it. Corey Davis Jr., the senior from Lafayette, Louisiana, with 13. Brooks with 16. Davis with a baker's dozen doing all the work for Houston as McMurray answers with his third field goal. I would try to get Corey Davis a look right now. He's entered the feel-good zone, and they're having a hard time keeping him out of the lane. Here he is. Gave it off to Alley. Left alone, and Alley hits a three. That's the first made field goal by a player off the bench for either team today. Alley has been ice cold. Seven for 46 from three since a game earlier this year when he hit five at BYU. He has been doing nothing offensively. But a big shot there and an offensive rebound here for Dixon. McMurray into Brooks. And McMurray was on the sideline. One of the hidden keys in this game, I want to give Tim Jankovic a lot of credit. His best player is out with an injury. He's already depleted his roster because of NCAA scholarship reductions. For Ron Hunt is a kid that could really help him. He had a technical foul in the first half. He hasn't seen the court since. I think that's some good teaching. Well, Tim Jankovic knows how to win, particularly in this building. Kelvin Sampson told us he thought SMU could go 9-0 in the league at home this year, but that means they've got to beat his Cougars, and they've got to stop Corey Davis, who cannot be contained. Largest lead for Houston on the Davis three. 30 straight games with a three for Corey Davis Jr. C.J. White. Little used player off the mark. Davis. This Houston team number eight in the net rankings. 21st in the AP. 16 and one. The class of the American Conference and they are tearing up SMU. Gresham with a thunderous slam. Witt finally misses, kept alive by Dixon. And Witt converts. How can SMU find a stop right now? Uh, they're really extending their defense. Look, I, I don't totally believe in Houston's perimeter game. I think I would pack it in a little bit more, close out late. Davis with Shagwa on him. Got around him and gets the roll. 13 in the second half for Davis, 18 in total. Oh 
Shagwa. Witt, back-to-back -back possessions with a basket. Jimmy Witt with 20. Get the ball to Corey Davis Jr. He's making plays in every possible way. Scoring, passing, locking down on defense. Dixon on Davis. Davis finger rolls at home. This is a clinic. Corey Davis is hot as a firecracker. They can't stop him. Houston is 12 of 15 collectively in the second half. Shagwa hits a three. By the way, we still have not hit the under 12 media timeout. And we're closing in on the under eight. Long, sustained play without a whistle, and it has benefited the Cougars. Remember today, Calvin Sampson said he believes it's critical to have depth in the American. I see that now because SMU's guys are gassed. Davis, carry. Hey, we want to welcome you to the Corey Davis Jr. Show. Off the dribble, knocking down shots, locked down D, and he's led Houston to a 13-point lead here at Moody Coliseum. A star-studded Saturday full of NBA, college hoops, and UFC on ESPN, ESPN Plus, and ABC. Houston Cougars, the class of the American Conference early, looking for a four and one start in conference play, a 17 and one start overall. Kelvin Sampson's team of the Bakers does it. And they're a junkyard dog defensive team, and everybody in the AAC knows it, just like Cincinnati. Galen and Davis are like the infantry. They're, they're the first line of defense. They're solid at the point of attack. They're not allowing ball reversals. They keep it on one side of the court. This is a defensive clinic they're putting on. And other than Jimmy Witt, they have completely shut down SMU. Here's Davis with a rebound. His third to go with three assists, 20 points. Hey, have you seen SMU get a wide open shot today? It's hard to think of many, if any. Double team comes, a foul is called. And Jamal McMurray, who can create space in just about every way, has taken 10 shots. I think every one of them has been contested. Well, tonight, I have a feeling that Jamal McMurray is going to wake up in a cold sweat, and he's going to see Corey Davis Jr. in his nightmare. He's hit and bumped and fouled by Isaiah Mike, who is still down. Third foul against Mike, who was down briefly after his spill in the first half. Once again, SMU cannot afford injuries. They have zero points in this game from their bench. Ferran Hunt back in. They desperately need his activity. And you know, we call this a rivalry game. Oh, oh my gosh. That reminds me of the old days. Rumble in the jungle, thrill in Manila. The, <laughs> he took a blow right to the chops. And he's the one who was called for the foul, Isaiah Mike. Sophomore transfer from Duquesne. He had 11.3 points per game as a freshman. Duke's made a coaching change. And Mike made a program change. SMU really wish they could have had him last year with a shorthanded team. 10 points, five rebounds per game. They're leading free throw shooter. And out of his feet, it's good to see. Uh, his, his skill level is undeniable. Wow, that's brutal. That's a hard shot. And I will say this, it was unintentional. And it was a basketball play. And we talked early about the words that the referees are discussing right now. Excessive and unnecessary. Tim Jankovic really like the way he coaches what he does makes sense to me and they've done such a good job with their training shake milton sterling brown ben moore shemi ogile 
Kim Jankovic's players get better, especially in the skill department. So Mike was actually calling for his fourth foul there. He leaves the game with the injury and the foul trouble. Nate Hinton to the line. Nate Hinton is a true freshman, future star, all-league guy, future NBA prospect, in my opinion. Preseason freshman of the year in the conference. And his first two today. Part of the reason he's going to be so good, I think you saw it too, at shoot-around today, how he was being mentored by Corey Davis. I, I always think that the best teams are player-led, not necessarily coach-led. Here's Witt. Jimmy Witt is fouled. Hit the shot for good measure, though. It didn't count. Jimmy Witt's got 20. The rest of SMU, 25. Witt trying to keep the Mustangs alive at home. SMU has not led this game. Houston has led basically the whole way. A lead of 15 for the number 21 Cougars. Pull out the top 25 teams in action as part of a Saturday showcase this weekend. Kentucky and Auburn at 4 Eastern on ESPN, followed by a sonic blockbuster of the season so far. Undefeated number four, Virginia, who crushed Virginia Tech last night. The Who's head to Cameron and take on number one for now, Duke. At 6 Eastern, both games on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. Who do you like, Virginia I, Duke? Well, I, I like I like Virginia because uh, I like their guards better. And, and that's saying something. Jones is out. Barrett, Reddish, Guy, and Jerome, and Hunter for Virginia. Whose guards do you like better? It's hard to pick against Virginia's with everything they've done over the years. A little more experienced group. And they've won in Cameron in the recent past. They will, I would think. If Virginia wins that game, I think they jump to number one. Or do you think the Wolverines go from two to one? No, no, Michigan. Michigan's body of work is better than Virginia's. They will be number one. But they've got to beat Ethan Happ on Saturday at noon in Madison. Shagwa fouled on the way up. I'll say this, though. Virginia gets through a week where they beat Virginia Tech and Duke on the road. The bodies of work are awfully close. But... It's all semantics at this point. Uh, Want to be undefeated either way. Well, I think body of work, Michigan has not lost in a long time. Almost lost to this guy, Kelvin Sampson, in the second round of the tournament last year. Here's Shagwa, who gets a friendly bounce on the first, with a foul against Fabian White. His second. And he's so much bigger than these guys, but Shemi Ojale and Ben Moore are bigs that play like guards. And Calvin Sampson was raving about Ethan Shagwa practice today. He said, you know, that's a high-level player. He would play for every single team in the country. Cohen was concerned about guarding Shagwa. You see, you can't really guard him with a low post five. Has to be someone who can get out and stretch. Giro found some space. Shagwa with the reach in. Just an empty handed swipe. It's White on Shagwa. Shagwa into the body of White. Tough angle shot. Rebound again. Here's Davis, seven for seven and a half. First miss. And Shagwa. Gets up a little bit late behind the plane. No Jure Foster out with a sprained knee. Suffered in the first four minutes for SMU. Isaiah Mike has been on the bench for quite a while, but he'll be coming in. Offensive rebound, White. And stripped on the way up. We got a foul. Blocking foul against Hunt. I think that SMU is playing hard, but Houston, they are bringing physicality and toughness, and you can just look, they're, they're an old man team. They have developed their bodies, they've, they've developed over time, and I think that the more physical team is winning this game. 
That's a compliment from you, right? Say they're an old man team. They're old men, yeah. <laughs> You're not appreciating that, but you know, they they've been through a lot. They're weathered. Experienced group four seniors for Kelvin Sampson, who did point out some of the youth. There's some of the youth with, with White, who is just a sophomore. Back-to-back -back starts for him, the first two of his career. This is the largest deficit of the season for a five-loss SMU team. Mike. Kept alive by White, but he only knocks it into his own bench. And this really can't be that much of a surprise. I did a little film study of the Wichita State-Houston game, and, and you started to see that intensity on defense. The Shockers, 39%. 15 turnovers. And the fast break was non-existent for Wichita State. That last ball, by the way, accidentally touched by Houston last. Stays with SMU. Hunt can't connect. SMU shooting at just 39% before that miss against this Houston defense. Second in the country only to Texas Tech in field goal percentage defense. Gresham from Jerome. Poked away by Witt. Davis on the spot. Has to be Jerome. Got it on the iron. Offensive rebound made hit. Davis misses a three. And Witt finally ends the possession for SMU. You know, this is a defensive masterpiece by Houston, a Picasso. Very few open shots, and I'm going to say this right now. That was a great set for SMU. That was the only time this entire game I can remember a defensive breakdown and a wide open shot. And it was Mike, the recipient from Witt. Isaiah Mike with 10 points, second Mustang on the floor with double figures. The Mustangs have enough firepower to get back in this quickly. McMurray, he'll shoot two when we return. Well, you've heard defense wins games, and here's some pretty nice offense by Isaiah Mike. They've got a lot of work to do to make up a 15-point deficit here in Dallas. Kelvin Sampson, three minutes, 45 seconds away from his 600th career Division I win. If you like round numbers, this is a fun one. It would be his 100th at Houston. Only 13 in the first year. In the NIT in years two and three. One point away from the American Conference Championship last year. And of course, the buzzer beater away from a trip to the Sweet 16. And this may be his best team yet. Kelvin Sampson told us, we're not great at anything which is a pretty staggering comment for a 16-in-1 group. You asked him, what do you do best? He said, we compete. We have lots of self-pride. Uh, all due respect, I disagree. They're great on defense. Top 20 in the nation. They're very scouting report specific. You can see that their players have bought in to the scouting report. They know tendencies, they force to weaknesses. And the fact that Jamal McMurray, one of the best scorers, about 19 points per game, is eight below his average right now is a testament to some great defense. And with a win, Houston go to four and one. Stay in a tie for a second by percentage points in the conference. UCF right now down late in the first half at Wichita State, trying to end the night's unbeaten start to conference play. Well, I haven't seen a lot of zone, but I think this is a good curveball. 39% from the field so far for SMU. You know, there have been a couple of times in this game, Kevin, that, that I had to take a double look because I was thinking, it looks like Houston has six guys out on defense. That would be against the rules, so obviously I was wrong, but they are so active and so connected. We should hire you as our Mike Pereira of basketball. 
You know, the crazy thing about that is Houston's not a big team. One of the smaller rosters in the power conferences, and yet one of the best defenses in all the nation. Nice find. Hunt. Dixon got the underside of the hoop, but was fouled. SMU still playing, down 13. Free throws coming after Dixon took a painful spill. Yeah, I, I do like the word connected, though. And the help defense has been really good. And I hope that Tim Jankovic gives his team the day off tomorrow because they are going to need to recuperate. Could be ice bath Thursday here in Dallas. Sports Center tonight after Pelicans Warriors from LA with Stan and Neal. What is the chief concern as Kansas City gets set for the Pats? Preview the NFC title game as well. Rams Saints. James Hart, once coached by Kelvin Sampson, his case for MVP. And his historic run continues. And Rachel Nichols sits down with Boogie Cousins ahead of his long awaited return on Friday tonight on ESPN and the ESPN app, 1 a.m. Eastern, midnight Central. Oh, by the way, James Harden dropped 58 tonight. Are you kidding? Second straight game That's with 50-plus. That is crazy. James Harden's first year as a Rocket, he was coached by Kelvin Sampson for 13 games. Kelvin was an interim coach when Kevin McHale took a leave of absence. Went seven and six in that span. Robinson. Here comes SMU, down 11. Win. Great five! Whoa. And Mike finishes. You might as well run the court when Jimmy Witt's got the ball. He will find you. Eight in a row for the Mustangs, and Moody is alive late. Timeout, Houston. There's a reason they rarely lose much here. SMU tooth and nail down to the wire. A single digit scoreline in Dallas. Eight in a row for SMU, cut this to a nine point deficit. Here at Moody Coliseum. Saturday, full slate of hoops for you. We've got NBA, we've got Virginia Duke, college hoops, and UFC fight night. The debut of the UFC and ESPN Plus, the prelims 8 Eastern, and a true super fight between Henry Cejudo and TJ Dillashaw at 10 Eastern. Start your free trial today. Go to ESPNplus.com or visit the ESPN app. Well done. Very well done with the read. Thank you very much. That's, that's, that's nice. kind. It's nice to be complimented on a read sometimes, frankly. All right, let's talk comebacks let's here. Let's talk comebacks. Trapping aggressive defense. Can you force turnovers? Can you get to the three-point line in transition? Long possession for Houston. Brooks with five to shoot. Brooks from Round Rock. Fifth three for Brooks. McMurray cannot answer. And it's just about done here in Moody Coliseum, courtesy of another deep, deep three from Armani Brooks. Davis. Could've been a little earlier than Calvin Sampson wanted. There's Mike for three. Timeout SMU. Five for 21 from three. As SMU goes through the video tomorrow, they're gonna see a lot of contested threes. Houston is not gonna see as many contested threes. This is the last one from Armani Brooks from a long way out. Yeah, Armani Brooks is a great compliment. Remember, they play three guards, and he is the third guard plays really big on defense, and he helps out on the boards. How many times, Kevin, do you see a team that has a guard as their leading rebounder? Both these teams, and basically never again will you see two teams in a game with Brooks for Houston Witt for SMU. I think that's the impressive thing about Brooks, was the sixth man of the year in the conference last season. Always been that great shooter was not always this full of a player. And you get that Kelvin Sampson system 
That's what he wants to see. Yeah, his job is to replace Rob Gray, one of the best one-on-one -on -one scorers. And once again, strategy. Go for a trap, get a quick steal. If you don't get it, you better start following. Houston would not be shooting it. SMU has a couple of fouls to give. Giroux got it out to Robinson in there. What commits the foul? So that's five. One more foul to give before Houston starts shooting free throws. Corey Davis has played a gem of a game, and Kelvin Sampson is still mad. He's a perfectionist. He's revitalized this program. If I was thinking of a word as a coach, I, I would say that Kelvin Sampson is confrontational, and he's a teacher. I guess that's two words. <laughs> that's, did, that's why you're not a teacher. <laughs> I did the best I could. <laughs> what do you major in, Michigan? I was going to say basketball. That would be unfair. Might be accurate. Davis. And Houston got a timeout. Corey Davis. The ball in his hands before the timeout. The ball's been in his hands a lot in the second half. So the best player on Houston is Corey Davis. Complete package, 15 points. Makes 95% of his free throws. Stopper on D. I don't think we give enough credit for the effort he has made to lock down the best shooter, Jamal McMurray. He's got 11 points. He said, well, 11, that's, that's a pretty good number. No, he averages 19, and he has been pretty much unstoppable this year. And he's 3 for 12, McMurray, so it's taken him 12 shots to get those 11. And there were some around the program who thought that maybe Davis was their best guy last year with Rob Gray, as you mentioned, such a great one-on-one -on -one score. But the work Davis did defensively last season and this season, he's become their unquestioned leader now. Game-winning three with 28 seconds to go against St. Louis a few games back. Looks to be their leading scorer for the sixth time in nine games tonight. Hoping to send Houston to a 17-1 and start. McMurray gives the final foul to give. And Houston will shoot upon the next foul. You know, good teams in late game situations know who the free throw shooter is. I am almost certain that Davis is going to get the ball somehow. Houston wants him to shoot. He's 95%. Would you guard the inbounder here or would you double Davis? I, I would. Wow. Wouldn't Either. do that. <laughs> Wouldn't. <laughs> Brooks is fouled. And a one and one coming for Armani Brooks. And for SMU, it looks as if three and two will be the conference record with the loss. This is an easy coming out. They head to the road. Three of the next five. Memphis on Saturday. Game against Tulane. They'll be a heavy favorite in that one on ESPNU. And then Two very tough places to visit, Wichita State and Cincinnati. Is Central Florida with B.J. Taylor, Aubrey Dawkins, Taco Fall, are, are they the best team that you've seen so far? Not better than Houston. Uh, and those two, and I'd put Cincinnati slightly behind them because of a rougher stretch right now for them. They look to be the top three in the American with Temple fighting for four. There's McMurray missing a three, and the ball pinballs to Houston's Hinton, who is fouled. SMU wants a jump. Oh, we have a jump ball, actually. And possession error to SMU. Where do you think conference like this, what, what seems like the right number of teams that the American gets into the tournament this year? Well, four, but... But I, I, I would imagine that you're going to have a lot of movement between now and then. Ten teams with 10-plus wins this year. Four feels right to me right now. McMurray, that's basically a summation of his night. Shots from a tough angle off the side of the rim. Giro is fouled. Nine-point lead, 31 seconds to go. Here's what's up next for Kelvin Sampson's team. They head to South Florida, which has given everybody an 
I mean legitimately everybody a fight this year. A way improved team. That will be a good game Saturday. Yeah. Home for East Carolina Wednesday. There was a time that I thought that East Carolina was the easy mark in this league. That's that's no longer the case. Beat Cincinnati a couple of weeks ago. I mean, honestly, none of these games are easy games except maybe the East Carolina one. But East Carolina beating Cincinnati, played UCF tough on the road. You talk to coaches up and down, and they will tell you they think this is the best from top to bottom that the American Conference has been. Well, what you're seeing is as the league matures, recruits are watching the quality and say, you know, I want to buy into that. That's the reason that there's so much depth and parity. Mike couldn't bank in a three, and the shot clock is turned off. Tim Jankovic will call off the dogs. Well, there's a couple of things that I was really impressed with. Houston won this game because they won the rebounding battle. They took a team that chases every rebound, and they were able to take them out of that part of the game. Well done. Kelvin Sampson's 600th win as Division I head coach and his 100th at Houston is a 69-58 victory over the SMU Mustangs. Houston swept this season series last year. They win the first to two between these in-state rivals on a Wednesday night. For Tim McCormick, our entire crew, this is Kevin Brown signing off for Moody Coliseum. The Cougs, 17-1, the class of the American, keeps rolling on.